with the bill of a duck, a beaver-like tail, thick downy fur and babies that hatch from eggs, you can see why when the first specimens of this strange creature were sent back to Europe that they thought it couldn't possibly be real. Spanning a remarkable evolutionary gap between reptiles, birds and mammals, this fascinating monotreme is no longer a common sight in our region's waterways. Droughts, water extraction, pollution, dense weeds and improper fishing techniques have pushed these mysterious creatures further into the dark. So what can we do through research and conservation to help build a more hopeful future for this unique animal? This is the story of the duck-billed platypus. Rosalinda Brickman. I work for Watergum, which is a local environmental community group. We're here today in the upper reaches of the Namamba Valley to talk about the duck-billed platypus. The duck-billed platypus is one of Australia's most iconic species. Platypuses are one of few egg-laying mammals, known as monotremes. They have a duck-like bill, dense waterproof brown fur, webbed feet and a flat thick tail for fat reserve storage. Males also have a poisonous sperm. The unique features of the platypus had scientists baffled when they first discovered this species. For example, platypus close their eyes when they dive down looking for prey. They utilize electroreception to find their prey. Platypi can also walk over land. They fold over their webbed feet and walk on their knuckles to find the next water body. Platypus become sexually active in their second year. After mating, females will lay one to three eggs following a 21-day gestation period. The females then incubate the eggs for approximately 10 days. After incubation, the lactation period starts for three to four months before the young come out of the burrows. These young will live for 20 more years in the same creek system. Platypus live in the east and southeast of Australia, including Tasmania. The further south you go, the bigger the platypus. A hotspot for platypus is the Namimba Valley. Platypus live in freshwater rivers and creeks, and they need different habitats within these systems to survive. A white water body that is not deeper than seven meters, like a rock pool, is an ideal home. They furthermore need fast flowing sections in the creeks and rivers, as this is where good quality macroinvertebrates are, which they feed on. They will need a good two to three kilometer stretch each. Macroinvertebrates are water bugs and they come in all different sizes and shapes. Ideally, you want very good water quality for platypus and connectivity between creeks and rivers. A bad waterway means no real connectivity to different tributaries, polluted water, eroded riverbanks, as well as a lot of human disturbance. Platypus are absolutely a keystone species as they have a fundamental role in our waterways. They're one of the key predators in the waterways and they also keep everything nice and balanced. Platypus are protected by law, meaning that they cannot be captured or killed. However, they are listed as a special lease concern in Queensland, meaning that there is no federal or state conservation plan for this species. Internationally, however, under the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, threat list, they are listed as a near threatened. The lack of information available about this mysterious animal does not help its conservation, unfortunately. Platypus populations are threatened by droughts, erosion, pollution, river sedimentation, human disturbance, invasive species, pests, pets, and also lack of appropriate legislation. For example, unfortunately, we discovered some deceased platypus in our local creeks during the recent drought. This was caused because the river stopped flowing, therefore no connectivity between creeks or rock pools, and also there was no water bugs for our platypus to eat. Opera house yabby nets are a common threat to our platypus. They swim in, but they can't get out. There have been cases of seven drowned platypus in one opera house net in total. Imagine the consequences for that particular creek system. Pet dogs are also a problem, especially in off-leash areas. Pet owners really need to be more responsible along waterways. Also, not having enough native vegetation along the creek line increases the chances of riverbank erosion and river sedimentation. This is why a buffer along waterways is very important. And I'm talking about a buffer that is at least 20 meters wide and full with riparian vegetation, local natives. It's very important to know where a platypus live and how they're doing during different times of the year. By contributing to our platypus surveys, like our Watergum Platypus Watch program, you help towards providing local and state government with the information they need to help protect our platypus. 
Uh, my name is Jeff Irons and um, I'm a volunteer with Platypus Watch and we're here in the upper reaches of the Narang River today uh, up in Numbar Valley. So I've been a member of uh, Platypus Watch for about six or seven years now with my son Damien. Two or three times a year we participate in uh, a Platypus Watch survey where we survey a number of the rivers in the Gold Coast hinterland area, uh, the Narang being one of the rivers. That entails getting up about 4.30 in the morning and heading off around about 5 because we want to be on the water as soon as first light is there and that's usually the best time to see them. So it's important that we gather this data so that we get an overall look at the rivers and the health of the platypus and the effects that maybe natural systems have on it, such as flood or drought, and also the effect of man-made impacts on the river. It's important then for this data to be given to councils and other bodies that are involved in caring for the, for the river system. We've had the opportunity to live on this river for about 16 years and uh, every day just about we could go down to the river and, and watch the platypus and it became a very special animal to us I guess and it just gives you a sense I suppose of how unique nature is and how unique and special this animal is and, and what we need to do to preserve it. People can also help by keeping their dogs on the leash along waterways to not pollute make sure to recycle and by planting native vegetation along creek lines if you own a riverfront property. There are numerous ways to protect your property by going for grants, joining your local Land for Wildlife program, state government's Garbon Farming program and the Nature Assist program. If you want to find out more how you can get involved with saving our platypus, please visit the link at the end of the video. Other things you can do is to talk to your family, friends and neighbours, educate your local fishing and tackle shop on the threats of opera house nets. There are plenty of other yabby nets out there that will do the trick without harming our platypus. You can all join our platypus surveys at any time. You just have to complete our compulsory induction, which is fun, and you'll get to know everything about platypus. I've dedicated so much of my time to this incredible species and I have so much more to learn. So let's all do our part to make sure that the platypus will become a frequent sight again in our local waterways. Mm -hmm.